Hey guys, it's Casey. Welcome back to my life. It's been a hot minute since I've done one of these vlogs, so I'm probably talking too fast and I feel very awkward for the camera, but I'm just gonna go for it. In a weird change of events, I have moved to Denmark. For those of you who haven't been following my vlogs, the reason why that's weird is because I'm a Canadian PhD student at Trinity College Dublin in Ireland, so really I should be in Ireland right now, or in Canada. But since I am neither of those things, I'm going to explain how I got here, why we're here, and the experience I've had dissertating well in the middle of a pandemic. <coughs> the last video I posted I filmed in Canada while we were home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We were forced to return to Canada under sort of a threat of homelessness, which is enough to make anyone's productivity decline and I was also undergoing a number of health issues, not COVID, thank goodness, um, that prevented me from doing a lot of the progress that I would have liked to have done during the first couple of months of the pandemic. From March 13th till about May 7th, I was what you might call a cocooner. I did not leave our apartment building. And when I say I didn't leave our apartment building, I mean I physically did not leave even our unit more than maybe four or five times over the course of three months. I was pretty worried about getting COVID, not the least of which because I have some underlying health conditions that would make getting the virus potentially very dangerous for me, despite the fact that I'm a very young person. I have asthma, a history of anemia, there's blood clotting issues in my family, and I just generally don't have a very strong immune system. I had a really bad bout of pneumonia in 2004 that may very well have been SARS. And I also had a pretty bad case of H1N1 during the H1N1 pandemic. Epidemic? I feel like I can't apply the word pandemic to the H1N1 crisis because it was nowhere near as bad or as long lasting as the thing we're currently experiencing. But because of these issues, I have lung damage and a bad immune system and a history of getting infectious diseases. And so I was 100% on board with staying home, staying safe, letting the pandemic take its course without me being a part of it. So I was cocooned. My partner did all the grocery shopping. We had some things delivered. My roommates started working from home. So the four of us were trapped in our very small apartment. Um, for the most part, I actually did not even leave our bedroom during those three months. I wasn't coming in contact with our roommates very often because they were taking up a lot of the space downstairs for their work. They had the, commandeered the dining room. And my partner was working in the living room and so that left me the bedroom and I worked in our bedroom when I could. Even during those first three months, I was not as productive as I would have liked. And the reason for that was that I was getting sicker and sicker. I was pale, I was nauseated all the time, I slept a lot, I couldn't motivate myself to work, I had brain fog, things were kind of weird and I felt depressed, and then my hair started falling out, which was our first major sign that something was wrong, and we realized pretty quickly in probably late April that I was suffering from a severe vitamin D deficiency. Turns out your body needs sunshine. You have to like go outside. Anyway, so I didn't really have the opportunity to go outside. Some of the times I went outside were after dark, which ideally wasn't helping with the vitamin D deficiency, but just to get some fresh air, uh, because I was worried about encountering people in the courtyard even. Like I was, I was pretty scared. I have a lot of anxiety when it comes to medical stuff and the kind of COVID panic really overtook me. So I was really quite anxious about getting the virus and I wanted to cocoon. I started taking vitamin D supplements and that helped me to regain some of my energy levels. My hair stopped falling out and I started recovering by early May. However, at this point we had another huge stressor and another huge life event happened, which is that our roommates decided to return to their home country. So they are also not um, Irish natives. And because of the situation in Ireland at that time, 
they decided that they would rather work from home from their country rather than from Ireland and that way they could be with their family, they could still cocoon, but then also the the caseload in their home country was not as bad as it was in Ireland at that time and so they felt like they wanted to leave. The issue then was that my partner and I could not afford the rent for our apartment on our own and our roommates went to the landlord and cancelled the lease without our input, knowledge, whatever. So they basically said, we're leaving in 30 days, we've already told the landlord and given our notice, you can figure out if you want to get new roommates in or if you want to leave at the same time we're leaving, which was May 14th, so they told us in, in mid-April. And we went to the landlord and we talked to the landlord who because the roommates had broken the lease and said they were leaving, uh, they were leaving their, their half of the lease, that our entire lease was kind of void and what we could do was continue renting our room from, from him, from the landlord, um, and he would have a, a new set of people come and, and stay in the second room and take on the other half of the rent. Under normal circumstances, I would find this slightly disagreeable considering that it, it he wanted to have the agent come in and show the apartment, so we had to clean it, vacate it, not be there when people were coming in to view our apartment uh, in the hopes of renting it. And also we wouldn't get to vet and or choose the people taking over our roommates half of the lease. Even under normal circumstances, I wouldn't have liked this because I'm a control freak, but under the circumstances of a global pandemic and at the time an outbreak in Ireland, this left us in a seriously dangerous circumstance because the landlord wanted to have people in the second week of May to come and tour the apartment and he had lined up apparently a bunch of viewings um, for people to come into our apartment where we'd been cocooning. So we no longer had this safe space that was safe from outside people coming into our apartment. We had no control because the landlord was and the agent were going to be sending people into our apartment. Because our lease was essentially broken without our consent, we were thus in a position where we said, no, you can't have someone move in for May 14th and take over the second half of that month. Um, and therefore be showing like the, the week of May 7th. We don't feel comfortable with that. And the only arrangement that we could kind of come up with was, okay, then you guys have to be out before May 7th because that's when we're going to be starting to, sh to show the room. Well, Elmer was pretty nice about it. He agreed he would prorate the rent in May if he could find someone to rent for the second half, which of course he didn't because it was in the middle of a pandemic and no one wants to move in the middle of a pandemic. But anyway, we were forced out uh, we had about two weeks to pack up all our stuff, put it in storage, and fly home to Canada. Keep in mind that I was still quite sick at this time. I felt like I had no immune protection whatsoever, and we were being forced to fly because we, we weren't going to be able to find an apartment in Dublin in the time allotted. Like, it just, it, it takes months to find an apartment in Dublin when it's not a pandemic, you know? And no one's moving during a pandemic. So we were, because... Of, evictions were supposed to be cancelled. Like, theoretically, we shouldn't have been able to be evicted, but we were kind of illegally evicted because the, the landlord said, well, I'm moving strangers into your other room, into the second room in your apartment, because your roommates have essentially cancelled your lease. So we moved back to Canada for three months, which was actually quite a nice break from being really quite isolated and alone. My partner and I were able to stay with his parents who have a property with a backyard and a front porch and they live kind of out in the countryside so there was lots of areas to go walking where we didn't have to encounter a single other person and we could quarantine together as a family. I did only get to see my family, the ones we weren't living with, a couple of times while we were there but it was still nice to be home and close to family while we were there. However, needless to say, I did not get much work done between like April to June because one, we moved in a panic in the middle of a pandemic, two, I was quite sick and had to kind of recover, and three, there was a pandemic. The amount of stress and confusion and like bad news 
coming in is just going to make anyone's productivity bad, right? By late June, I was finally able to start working again, really. But it was a slow start, and it was a it was a a time in my life when I really should have been focusing and and buckling down on the work. Um, but that just wasn't possible given the circumstances. And my circumstances are nowhere near as bad as other people's and I'm not playing the victim here saying, oh, I was sick and we had to leave. Like, we were lucky enough that we had family we could rely on to, one, buy us emergency plane tickets, take us home, and let us live with them. And two, that we, like, we had a place to go and a place to recover and we were also very lucky that um, at that time, uh, flights were social distancing, everyone wore masks on the flight, and n no one from our flight, as far as I know, got sick, and certainly we did not get sick. It was around that time that we found out for sure that Reese had gotten into and accepted a PhD researcher position at the University of Aarhus in Denmark. When Reese was first thinking about taking this kind of position, he thought that he would be commuting from Dublin or that he would be commuting from Aarhus to Dublin. So the plan initially was for me to stay in our apartment, stay in Dublin, keep working at Trinity College as a TA, all that stuff, um, and for him to either fly to Aarhus once or twice a month for meetings, if that was gonna be possible, or to be in Aarhus most of the time and then fly to Dublin to see me. However, once he actually got his contract and looked into it more, it became really clear that he needed to be here. He needed to be in Denmark. He was going to have teaching obligations and meetings and an office and there's office culture and they, you know, they have meetings every day. And the way his PhD works is very different than the way my PhD works. I mean, we're in very different fields. He's in biology, uh, which is a STEM field. And so the way that STEM works is often very different than the way that the humanities work. And so we're quite very fortunate because we've been able to get permission for me to continue doing my degree remotely. And we didn't really even have to do anything special to do that because the last two years of the PhD, at least in my program and in my field, are writing years. So I'm doing the writing up of my dissertation. A lot of the kind of preliminary research is done. I've already passed the confirmation process. All of my courses have been taken and passed, so I don't need to be in Dublin in person in order to finish, which is really lucky for us because that meant we were able to move together to live in our house. And since we no longer had an apartment in Dublin that we were worried about, it really was a no-brainer that we were going to pack up and move to our house together. But of course, that meant flying again during a pandemic. And moving during a pandemic once was crazy. Moving twice really sucked. I mean, we ended up kind of moving three times because what happened was we flew to Aarhus with a temporary apartment lined up, like a temporary accommodations. It was like sort of more of a hotel. We were lucky we were able to move in August before like the students came in. So we had some leeway as to finding an apartment and we got lucky and found a place very quickly, signed a lease and moved in officially as of August 15th, our lease started. So we've been in this place now a month, which is crazy to me because this is now our third home in four months, our fourth home in six months, and we've moved during a pandemic. We're immigrating to another new country, this time to a country where I don't speak the main language, nor does my partner. And we're still in that kind of stage where I keep referring to the language that's spoken in this country as Dutch instead of Danish. Um, and I see, keep starting to talk to people in German. <sighs> we love our new apartment and hopefully the background behind me becomes a consistent uh, feature in these videos. But it's been very, very stressful the last few months. And now that it's September, I've gotten into contact with my supervisor and we've made a sort of plan for how it's going to work um, in terms of finishing my degree remotely. And one of the first things he asked was, how much progress have you made in the last six months? But he did add the caveat, it's okay if the answer is none. Now my answer wasn't none. My answer was very close to none. It was next to none. 
but it wasn't none. Like there was a lot of things that I had been working on or processing or thinking through. So I've been thinking about my introduction a lot. I've also been reading a lot of stuff that will hopefully be referenced in the dissertation. Like a lot of the work of doing a dissertation is percolating. It's letting things sit and solidify and let ideas find each other and connect themselves. And so often it seems like you're not really doing a lot of work, but then you are actually working. And from the outside, it actually looks like not a whole lot is being done. And that can be really stressful because you don't have any like tangible deliverables. So I had to go to my supervisor and be like, I don't have any tangible deliverables. I can't say I wrote this chapter or I worked on this paper or anything like that, but I did not let it fall off my plate. Like it was something I was constantly keeping in the back of my mind and I've made a lot of plans and I've thought a lot of things. I've made some outlines. I've done some reading like, bits and pieces here and there that, again, does not amount to much tangibly, but will hopefully set me up to work fairly quickly in the coming year once things are really settled down. We're still working on unpacking a little bit and we still need some furniture. Our apartment's pretty empty. It's basically a white box except for the bookcase behind me. But other than that, we've been really fortunate in terms of, again, not getting sick despite traveling twice during a pandemic on very long international flights. I feel like some people need to hear, it's okay if the answer is none, because not every supervisor is gonna have that expectation. I think that for a lot of people, the last six months or eight months or however long they've been in a very stressful situation due to the pandemic, whether that's financial strain or like, for us, it was the threat of homelessness. Like we, we really didn't know where we were gonna go when, when the Dublin thing first happened because we couldn't stay there. There was absolutely no way we were gonna let strangers come into our home. The threat of homelessness does not help write a dissertation, nor does the inability to pay one's rent, the lack of work, having to switch to online teaching for a lot of people who are doing like piecemeal teaching work. A lot of that is dried up or moved online. And, you know, for a lot of people who are already in a really precarious situation, the pandemic has worse than that. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of academics and a lot of PhD students have either put their PhD on hold or dropped out completely. And while I haven't done that, and I think I'll still finish in the time frame that we decided on two years ago, there's still a lot up in the air about how this is gonna work and I don't have access to a lot of library materials that I had in Dublin. Other than materials that I can access online, I have been pretty much cut off from materials that I might need to finish. And so there will probably be times when I have to travel either to Zurich or to Dublin to find materials that I need to write up. But I do have a home. I do have a quiet space to work. I have a desk. I have a supportive partner. So we're very, very fortunate. And despite everything that went wrong, there are lots of things that went right. And I think we're gonna be okay. And if you are also doing a dissertation during a pandemic, just try to remember that these are extraordinary circumstances. You can't be expected to have done all the amount of work that you would have done had you had better circumstances. Like under ideal conditions, I might have written a whole nother chapter by now. I still think I'm doing pretty damn well considering that the world is burning. Give yourself the time you need, the resources you need, take care of your health and your mental health and do what needs to be done before you worry about schoolwork. And I know that shouldn't be the message because especially in a PhD, everyone thinks that you should be working 80 hour weeks and pushing yourself to the limit and causing yourself to have a breakdown. No, you should not cause yourself to have a breakdown. Dissertating is hard enough without a global pandemic. It's okay if the answer is none. I hope you're all healthy, happy, and safe. Take care.